Hi Aries, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for February 2018. So before we jump in, I want to say a special thank you to my friends over at Hair Entourage who have hooked me up with a little piece to wear for you guys while I'm transitioning my natural hair into growing it out, so protective styling. So all the details about this piece and how to find Hair Entourage are in the description box down below. All right Aries, so super interesting month. First of all, we had a lunar eclipse that brought us from January into February, but we we actually don't have a full moon happening this month, which is really, really interesting because that means there's no super big culminations happening this month, right? But what we do have is a solar eclipse happening this month. We'll have Pisces moving, or we'll have Venus moving into Pisces, which is going to just load up for you in this 12th house, the clairvoyance, the psychic sense, the intuitive sense, the vibes, the creativity, the feeling of being willing to put some things to closure, all of these things kind of culminate there. As well, this month, you've got a pretty loaded 11th house, a lot of things going on in the social zone, which is great. You know, if you're single and you wanted to do some internet dating or something like that, that would be on the agenda for you. Or maybe just your social group is changing. And another really big thing I continue to pick up on for you, Aries, just as I channel that information, is that your long range goals and dreams, I think are right here. They're right in front of you now. And the thing I just feel like I need to tell you is that it's okay. You can have them, Aries. It's okay to be where you're at and build a life from right there, not constantly worrying about when the other shoe is going to drop. And it is okay to want love, to have love, and to participate really good stuff. So I actually think it's a very romantic month this month as well, which I love because February has Valentine's Day, my favorite holiday. So let's just go on ahead and jump in and talk about this month. It's very straightforward as a matter of fact. Now, like I said, we do have the energy of um, we've got the sun, we've got Mercury, we've got Venus, all going to be hanging out in Aquarius, especially as we're getting into the month here. So here in the 11th house, very social, very busy. Um, your social media, if you need an upgrade to your social media spaces, this may be something that you're working on here as well. As well, we do have Mars in Sagittarius all month long. So your sense of adventure, your sense of wanting the truth, of, of wanting to see what's really out there, kind of this sense of expansion and also everything related to education. If you are finishing up your education, this is a wonderful energy with Mars giving you some action, giving you some movement. So keep that in mind. You do have that in your back pocket as well. If you've got something going on in the legal sense, this is also a very helpful energy for you as well, depending on your chart, of course. Now on the 10th of the month, we're going to see Venus moving into Pisces wonderful soft energy, protective, generous, compassionate, very, very romantic. And this is why I say, I think in terms of the word love, you very much so have some possibilities to really fall in love this month, Aries. This could be you fall in love with another person. That soulmate energy comes in. This happening in the 12th house is that soulmate connecting energy. But your soulmate can be somebody who's not just a romantic person in your life. The soulmate can be the person who comes in and helps you while you're down. Maybe you're in a beautifully committed relationship and somebody swoops in and you didn't expect them to and they help you come out of the rut that you're in. Maybe the soulmate is just a friend. Maybe you just have a soulmate contact. All of these things are possible with all of this compassionate, idealistic energy running through your 12th house. Because in the 12th house, we walk between the worlds, right? So whatever your soul is calling for, calling, needing, it's going to be ushering its way in. Really beautiful energy to work with. And I also feel like too, I want to speak if you're single, this is a beautiful energy for clearing out some space to make space for another person, right? And you've got all of this social energy coming in, so it's almost like you're dropping the baggage and willing to participate. If you're in a committed relationship or if you're in a relationship that is a little bit more solid, right? I think that this is the month where you become willing to love unconditionally and maybe shed some prejudice that you had, maybe around even ideas of love. Even if you're single, the ideas or beliefs that you've had in love or, or relationships 
relationships or romance or any of those things. And don't forget this month too. You can absolutely fall in love with a business, a project, a dream of your own. You've got this 11th house of long range goals and dreams. So Aries, just your potential to open and flower in this idea of unconditional love and creativity is on the table for you. Now, by the time we get to February 21st, we're also going to see Venus and Neptune hug it out together right here in Pisces. And when these collide like this, this is very rich, very satisfying, right? It's a very satisfying, harmonious, delicious, creative kind of energy. So if you are also feeling too, though, like your sixth sense or your all of your feels are on, this is definitely a testament to this energy. Now on the 15th, we're going to have this solar eclipse happening in Aquarius. Now this is going to be over in your 11th house. Remember, long range goals, hopes, wishes, dreams, friends, networks, um, social medias, those all sit in the 11th house. The solar eclipse is going to be strong because it's not the only energy being eclipsed. Mercury's also being eclipsed with this solar eclipse. How about that business? So this is also going to help you jumpstart something new for yourself in this area. This solar eclipse as well is making a beautiful connection to Uranian energy, which is already in your sign. So this is your opportunity for something new. Do it different. Get out of your box. If you're feeling like you have this idea that you want to do something that seems like, oh, that's not really me. You know what I mean? Give it a try. Maybe the unknown is exactly where you've got to go right now, right? Maybe everything is not going to pan out the way that you thought it would, and you get to just be open to doing it different. Now, I will tell you, as we get to the 17th of the month, communication thinking and decision making get very, very interesting. And I would just tell you, be mindful of it. Move slow through this. Don't rush your decisions if you don't have to, okay? On the 17th, Mercury goes into Pisces. Mercury, our communication planet, goes into Pisces, which is a very watery energy, which this puts Mercury in fall. And if you haven't studied my video on planets in fall, make sure you check it out. But Mercury in fall is uncomfortable. He cannot express himself. So basically, it's like trying to communicate and everything is blurry. You can't see the details. The words aren't really coming out right, right? Mercury is not comfortable. This is in your 12th house. Then on the 18th, the sun also jumps into here. So there's light, heat, life, and vitality, but it's in this really foggy kind of energy, right? Now, the sun in Pisces is very happy here because it wants to light up your warmth. It wants to light up your creativity and your compassion. So one of the ways you can take advantage of this energy is maybe you can't make all these huge decisions. Maybe it's not a great time to sign that contract because you don't actually know what it says. You think you know, but you don't really know. Step away. Explore the other side of this. Where can you expand your compassion? Where can you... Um, expand your forgiveness, your closure, your letting go of fear. Where can you shed those things? I'll tell you too, if you happen to be a student or an investigator or somebody who's doing deep research following clues, this may also be a time where you feel like you lose your trail or you have to continue your trail and really trust that psychic sense, not so much your intellectual faculties. So really interesting energy. So you've already got this going on where it's a little cloudy here. Then we have also Mars in a square to Neptune, so my action doesn't seem clear either. Then on the 25th, we've got Mercury who comes into a really nice alignment with Neptune, but then on the 28th, we've got Mercury in a square to Mars. So this combination tells me the details may not be clear. It further tells me that you're, you may get frustrated. This is a frustrating communication energy. So you may be frustrated and then you lose your temper. So you want to be mindful this month as we get to the second half of the month, Aries. If you're finding you're pushing and pushing and pushing and this stone ain't going anywhere, you just want to back off, regroup, and try and come at it from a different perspective or take your hands off it all the way and enjoy right where you're at. I do think the other property that becomes really in play this month besides the romance that's floating around and the genuine possibility to tap into that, receive that, and participate in that is just Aries all your feels are on this month. So that is going to be good for some of you. It could be bad for some of you. Venus and Pisces certainly brings the feels to the surface. So if your feelings get caught up with you, just remember you always have a choice of what to do with them. But it is certainly going to be a month 
to focus on what you love, whether that be a person, place, thing, dream, long range goal, project, school, whatever it is, focus on what you love and move towards it this month, Aries. I look forward to seeing how this month went for you. Let me know if it gets cloudy. Let me know if you're experiencing a little bit of the fog, especially as we get towards the end of the month, all right? I love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you at $3 Thursdays, where we're going to talk about transits in the chart and around the chart. And we are also got a brand new Astrology 101 Basics class that for this session is going to be discounted so that we can all experience the new format together. All of the details for every everything is down in the description box, or you can come visit me at stormygrace.com. Bye, guys.